Well, sorry about this week's attempt. Um, <laughs> probably like a lot of the people that um, watched the first race of the season on Sky, like myself. Uh, it's been a bit of a long day, so I'm a bit weary. Um, hopefully next week normal service will be resumed. Um, but coming on to the fan formula questions for this week. Yes, Mega Melbourne. Well, what a great race. Um, we all didn't really know how... Um, <laughs> It was all going to pan out, but it was it was a great way to see the um, see the season in. Um, fantastic result for Jensen. Um, bit disappointed with how Lewis took his third place uh, trophy. I think yeah, at the end of the day, he's probably quite disappointed with himself. But he should have a smile on his face because he's got another opportunity next week at Malaysia. But until then, we'll see what happens. Um, what? Well, yes, the midfield teams. Um, I'll tell you what, the partnership between Ricardo and uh, Jean-Eric Van Electric, I can really see sparks flying between these two. Um, and obviously you had Sauber um, as well battling with the Mercedeses. Um, Kobayashi did some great overtakes and Perez did a, his his usual one-stopper, but obviously wasn't uh, didn't have a technical infringement like he did on the rear wing last year. So he kept his points this time, so good job for Sergio. Um, I think really it is good to see that how the 2012 regulations has really really closed things up in the midfield it's closer than ever um, and we're going to see some great great action um, especially with like I said earlier the, the two Toro Rosso drivers um, but obviously we should see more of an impact from uh, Kobayashi and Perez so uh, Mercedes, Force India Lotus watch out because um, you know Williams Toro Rosso Force India and Sauber could be at your tailpipes, um, you know, right at the edge of your rear wings. So um, it'd be interesting to see how it all develops around, you know, uh, over the season. The letting un, uh, back markers unlap themselves. I think, well, Martin Brundle put it very, very well that basically, look, they're the best drivers in the world. Surely they don't need, you know, it, it shouldn't be an issue. Um, I can understand it when you've got teams like uh, Lotus and Mauricio and obviously HRT didn't even start the race because of obviously, you know, um, as many people have tweeted about it, the, the HRTs have been mobile chicanes, especially notably uh, one Narain Karthikayan who blocked uh, Vettel and then blocked Alonso quite spectacularly to um, ensure that the request to race from HRT was denied by the FIA. So it's good to see that the 107% rule is being enforced. I think it's going to be a danger, especially when it comes to wet conditions. So if we have a major thunderstorm at uh, Malaysia next week and we see teams trying, you know, drivers trying to keep their visors clear and everything like that, we could see an accident, you know, we could potentially, if they're trying to keep, um, you know, keep warmth in the tyre, you know, the tyre's heated to the correct temperatures, we could see an incident where someone's weaving and then all of a sudden the back marker goes straight up their backside and that could be quite nasty. Um, I think it's going to take a while for the team, you know, the drivers to adapt and obviously uh, for the, the, the teams to get used to the regulation, but it, it, it's a case of suck it and see and, you know, trial and error and we'll just have to see what it, how it comes along and if it gets used in the right um, situations. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, as I said, I've watched the Sky coverage. Um, pretty impressed for a first effort. Um, obviously, it's going to take time for the new team to gel. Obviously, we've got a lot of the BBC crew there. Um, obviously, with uh, Georgie Thompson um, helping out Anthony Davidson with the Skypad and anchoring the F1 news, you know, the F1 show with um, with Ted Kravitz. Um, Lazenby, yeah, he's, he, he, you know, I have to give him his credit. He, you know, he's been um, the anchor for like the rugby coverage on Sky Sports, so he's he's very very good at what he does. Um, I think it will take him time to get confidence to you know start asking team principals drivers. Um, obviously, as there was quite a notable thing whereby he uh, sort of not so much inadvertently ducked out, but didn't want to interview Kimmy. I think. Um, and ended up someone else ended up interviewing him. I think I can't remember because I didn't really see much of the um, the highlights. Uh, you know, like the you know the after sh the after race talk. 
Um, it's good to have Damon Hill, another well-versed Formula 1 driver, obviously former champion in 96 with Williams. Um, Crofty is going to take a little bit more time, I think, because obviously he's used to doing radio. Um, there were a couple of times when he was, you know, obviously very excitable, you know, new challenge, new year, working with Sky Sports and obviously working alongside Martin. And there were a couple of times when obviously, uh, I think it was Rosberg was being chased by Kobayashi. And I think, I think it was one point it was Rosberg overtakes Rosberg. Um, but you can't help Crofty's enthusiasm. And I think it would just be a, it'd be a case that it just has to sort of maybe settle down a little bit, but still show a lot of enthusiasm. Um, there's been a lot of chat, chat on Twitter about Georgie Thompson. I think she makes a great addition to the team, um, but I think really with the Skypad, it should be one person, it shouldn't be two people. Um, and it'd be great, you know, obviously Anthony Davidson having the opportunity to use the Skypad more from a driver's insight. Um, I was a bit disappointed with um, how Ted Kravitz and Natalie Pinkham are being not so much uh, used, but how they're being directed in when they're appearing and, and, and obviously Ted is being used a lot less um, on pit lane than he was last year on the BBC um, but I think it's it's you know the interactive side of it is great it's fantastic I mean I've watched um, I think from about halfway up until about 10 laps from the end um, I actually pressed the red button on, on, on Sky and uh, checked it out and um, it was quite impressive that they've got a pit lane at timing fees and you know, race control if you want to call it that. Um, but hopefully, if I do decide to get myself an iPad, it'll be interesting to see how the Sky Sports F1 uh, companion app works, and that will really hopefully make it a bit more interactive from my perspective. You know, being being able to have it on the TV, but also having to have the activity, uh, you know, the the interactivity through a tablet or a a, a laptop. And um, so that'll be interesting to find out later on in the season. My favourite moment of the weekend. There's just so many to choose from. Um, I mean, second to that would be Jensen winning the um, winning the uh, winning the Grand Prix. But I have to say, my favourite moment of the weekend was um, the battle between uh, Fernando Alonso and um, Pastor Maldonado for for fifth place. And that FW34 is just so quick. I mean, Williams have really really come up trumps now with Renault now powering their vehicles the FW34 and it's it's great to see that Maldonado was, had the bit you know he was chomping at the bit he had the bit between his teeth and he was going for it he was not giving Alonso any let up until that unfortunate accident one lap from the end where he had that nasty crash uh, I, I do have to say this um, very very fortunate because that was a solid concrete wall that he hit obviously uh, the front wing uh, and the front suspension on the left hand side um, is, um, how can I put it, it's a fait accompli, um, so really uh, that was my highlight of the weekend, that Maldonado showing that Williams are now back, um, so yeah it'd be interesting to see how they get on with developing the car in the coming season, so that's really my answers for this week's fan formula, um, normal jazzy shirtness will be resumed next week guys, um, apologies for the uh, I've just been so busy um, today, so um, obviously with it being Mother's Day and everything. Um, so that's it, and I'll see you in a week's time after Malaysia. Look forward to that one. <laughs>